Now, the crystallization kinetics of composites. So, this is this involves material science, this involves engineering, this involves chemistry, this involves physics, this involves electronics, everything. This involves all aspects of science and engineering and also arts. So, DSC scans of non isothermal crystallization you can do. So, this is the endotherm. DSC stands for differential scanning calorimetry. So, this is a thermal test. So, this is where as you go to the this is the endotherm that means heat absorption all right endotherm is absorbing heat because exotherm means when it releases the heat. So, heat it is like when you are in when you are in winter your air conditioner gives you heat, but when you are summer your generator takes the heat away from you. So, here in the case of endotherm so you have to be if it is cold you have to put heat in it. So, that and if the temperature go, goes very high then you immediately stop it and cool it down. So, but this is a very nice way of identifying plastics and here if we do it at different heating time heating rate. So, this is the if you are heating at 20 degrees C per minute the endotherm comes up like that and if you are doing it slowly things is. So, now instead of the lab what you have what you can think about it if you are using this plastics outside in the garden or any other applications where there it is exposed to the temperature if the temperature goes up very quickly. So, these are affects the properties of the those components what you are doing because lab is something which gives you an, an idea of how much how to do it, but the actual it can happen sometimes the heat big heating may be very quick. So, then the energy absorbed will be very very much at the time ok depending on the temperature that low temperature there is not any change, but high, high temperature. So, if, if you are going to use it for some temperature application. So, these things are what notice it this is alpha phase. Now, this is the beta phase you have different phases the plastics the beta phase shows less endotherm, but here at 10 degrees C it like 5 10 it remains almost like that before, but the beta phase comes at a lower temperature. So, this shows different phases of the materials this is without fly ash and this is with fly ash. So, when you put fly ash you get a secondary phase that is what it shows that you get a secondary phase endotherm. So, it absorbs the heat. Now, if you also see the isothermal crystallization of polypropylene. So, at 130 or 132 or 134 degrees C, then you will see that the time the function of time it goes like that. So, the exosome comes up and so these are the cool melting and then when it is molten then cooling characteristics. So, what is the melting point of polyethylene for example? Anyone remembers? Yes, low density polyethylene what is the melting point? one that is high density polyethylene about 130, but it, it starts around 110, 110 something like that ok. Now, polypropylene you do not have high density or low de density, but polypropylene melting temperature is a bit more 170. Now, why is this 
cooling or things import because if you are doing it injection molding, so you have to heat it by about 230, 240 whatever it is and then when it is cooling down getting into the mold, it is cooling quickly. All right. So, that is what actually changes the all the things inside. So, that is important and around 130 degree onwards it starts this crystallization thing. And if you are giving cooling very fast then crystallization may not be that much, but if you are giving time then it will come slowly. And these are the when you are doing with plastics these are the things that one can now the equations from the for the crystallization so these are the different equations people have come up with and hopefully some of you will come up with more equations and this is what the, what does that mean percentage crystallization this is the percentage crystallization and this actually relates to delta h m the heat at melting point okay so these are all equations you will find that there are some equations involving logarithmic stages also for example this has logarithmic stage and this has exponential stage logarithmic and exponential stage sometimes people think they are different but in a way say inversely they are also related but one effect of log logarithmic thing is that the effect is less. So, these are some of the equations. Now, based on all these things, this is what we came up with plausible explanation for crystallization of polypropylene chains. So, if this is you have the composites, you have this is the polypropylene and these are the interface space, chain in free space, chain and the middle in between two particles, if you have the fly ash like here you have fly ash here here. So, if the distance between particles is low then the entanglement chain, so the chain size becomes much less. So, if you are, <coughs> this is a model which Dr. Dilip Devnath, he worked out and it is a nice one. So, this is for low fly ash concentration, this is for medium fly ash concentration and this is for large fly ash concentration. That means, this distance between the particles are like that. And one thing is that, if the fly ash particles were square or rectangular, then there, there would not be much of voids between them but the flash particles are not like that. So, you, you have some of the polypropylene things here. So, that is a that is a wonderful way to look at things okay? and that gives you different models. And what he has shown here, what we have seen, you can see this, this is the fracture surfaces of the composites, these are the flash particles. In some places, there is distance so, these large particles are distant like that. The, if you have smaller particles, the smaller particles have smaller distances between them. So, even with the same volume fraction, you have sites in some cases where you have large distance between the particles and you have small distance between the particles. So, the polypropylene chain size, chain length between the particles can change or depend you can have the same thing, you have short chain, and long chain, so that can affect the thing. So, if you have a polymer chain like that and under strain if it is trying to expand, it can do it this way or that way. Under strain, if it comes here, then these flash particles will prevent it to deform. So, it will, it will not have any help from the longer chains. So, this is the localized place like that and the entanglement 
polypropylene chain. That means this is not in free space, but this is in entangled space. So this, imagine yourself, if you are standing like that, I am I can, I'm walking like this, but if my friends in the first row here comes and forms a chain like second friend in the second row forms a chain like that, third row and from here, then I cannot go. Okay? And if I cannot go, I cannot deform. I cannot go there, all right? So that is how the polymers, they are for a small size, but to them the size does not matter. They are polymers and they, they have to take up the deformation, they have to take up the stress strain, something like that. So that's why this ACM picture has been placed before that. And here the, the scale bar is a bit low. Here the, it's 10 micron for the same length. So if you have in, earlier you had, if, so this is 30 micron. Earlier you had 10 microns and this is now 30 microns. So what is the, by what factor you are looking at the area? What do, you, what, is the area more or less? How, how many times more? No. How much? Yes. Area is, area is square of length. So you have to think about it. All right, so it's not three times, the scale bar is three times different, the area is nine times different. Does it make sense to everyone? Anyone who doesn't, does not, do not agree, please raise your hand. Okay, so that's the way to look at scanning electron micrographs. Okay, even very clever people also think it's just according to them, like you are all clever guys, but the micrograph says no. Length is square root of area, or square area is square of length. All right. Now, commercially confidential work. This is our provisional patent which we have sub submitted. Composites of sorry. Composites of modified fly ash and polymer. Modified flash means the flash was given in interfacial coating, something like that, to make it, like as Professor Kamalkar said yesterday, you put carbon on the plastic so that the body accepts it, all right? So if you put a coating on the fly ash, then the polymer may accept it. If you give a polymeric coating, then the fly ash, they, they will accept it, okay? Enriched tensile strength goes up by about four, four times which is 400 percent, and appearance of extensive interfacial bonding. So this is what our work had done. We submitted a provisional patent. But what happens in Australia, patents are very expensive. I wish we would have submitted all the patents in India. In India, patents go much more quickly. Yes, but, and also it's very legal. Legality, sometimes it takes two years, to three years, and things like that. Tell the Australian patents people, but the university says we cannot do anything about it. All right. So this is the TM image of fly ash before, and then method one after modification. So here you can actually see is a chemical modification which was done. And the tensile strength relationship of polymer fly ash. And now what you can see that without modification, 20% fly ash without modification and 20% fly ash with modification. So without modification, the strength is much less, but the elongation is quite high, about 100%. But with modification, the strength goes up by about four to five times, like four, one, four percent. And the elongation of the strain percentage wise is maybe about 10 percent, something like that. Now, is 10 percent an acceptable strain in deformation and fracture in application? I'm asking the engineers. 
civil engineers, if you have a bridge, you know, the trucks are going there, if the trucks can take up strain of 10 percent, is it acceptable? Yes, because it's an elastic thing, so 10 percent is, is quite good, all right? Normally 10 percent strain is, is quite good. So what is the strength of ceramics typically? Strain to failure? It's less than 1 percent, it may be 0.2 percent and things like that. What is the strain of failure of metals? 5 to 10 percent and in some cases it can go up. So if you still have, it may look, this red thing may look small, but if you extend that as, instead of 200 to 250, if you put 0 here and 50 there, then this red will come like there, okay? They depend on the scale bar. So neat polymer is, neat polymer is highly ductile and the modulus of elasticity is tan delta, much less than here and in this case you have the 20 percent fly ash modific with modification and here. So here you will see that the modulus of elasticity also is much higher. So that is important and up to 10 percent deformation is very good and stress has not been given here because stress can be, okay. And now polymer composite with fly ash and if you look like that and this is why from this work the German publisher. Germans are very clever and they are very technical. When they saw all the publications, they actually took all these things, the entire thesis, which are all the, and they, have, they published a book. I'll see if, if I have the cover page of the book. I have it somewhere, maybe. So this is now, these are the fly ash and the polypropylene is coating it and also it's combining with the other fly ash. So there is the polypropylene is coating it. Can you see that? The fly ash with modification. So it's now, it's, it is thinking that it is another polymeric material. The fly ash is a polymeric material. It's like when, were, when I went to ISRO, from BSc training school. I did my bachelor's degree in IIT Kharagpur and then I was given a at BSc training school, one year position and then I was asked and I went to ISRO. And when I went to Kerala, there, so Kerala was like polymer and I was like a fly ash particle, okay. So the bonding was not that good. And in fact, when, when we used to live in a building, we rented, and some of the people came outside, to, boys outside, and they kept on saying something, they kept on saying, why are you here from North India? I didn't understand anything, so I couldn't tell them, but my, that homeowner, T.P. Thomas, he told them, why are you disturbing them? They said, no, they have come from North India. They said, but what is wrong? You talk with them. He said, we talk with them, but they don't understand my language. Then I said, all right, I'll get it. So I'll put a coating on me. So I started learning the Malalam alphabet, okay? It's not easy, but I, it took me about six months or so, but I learned all the Malalam alphabet, reading, writing. And one day in my office, I said, okay, now I can read and write Malalam. Then there was one gentleman, he said, his name was Bala Subramaniam. He said, sir, I challenge you. I said, yeah, what challenge? If you can write my name now in Malalam, I'll pay for your cup of tea today. But if you cannot do that, you have to pay for my cup of tea. He said, okay. And I said, oh my God, it's like another BTEC exam. Okay, <laughs> right. So then I took down, I, but it took me about a minute or so, but I wrote it. And I said, then he came and asked me, sir, from Twitter honors, you are a Malayali. I said, so, so that is information, of, that is how a coating helps. And I used to tell other people from North India, 
Yes. When you are in Kerala, see what Kerala has. And that's what I do when I go to any part of India or otherwise. Okay? When I go to Gujarat, the first thing I learn, Kemche Saruche. And I, I say that, okay? Like when I went to Mumbai, BS training school, my, I was, wanted to learn the local thing, but you, people don't have time. So one day I was crossing the road and the red light came up and in Hindi it wrote Thamba. Then I read Thamba means stop, okay? And then in the restaurant I found that Khana Chalu Ahe, so Ahe means hi, okay? So I learned it like that and that's why whenever, wherever I go in India, I have that coating that I'm Indian coating, all right? Indian everything. So that is why I understand that. And would you believe all my colleagues in Kerala and Istro, they used to love me. So anytime I had any difficulty, sir, we are here to help you. I said, no, let me, let me try myself. If I cannot, then I'll come there. And they used to come. So that is the advantage of a coating. That means now the polypropylene, when you have this coating, it thinks it's a part of the thing. Okay? And that's what India is so great. India is so great. Okay? Like you go anywhere. To me, everyone I love. Everyone, whatever parts of India I go, I love. All right? Food and everything. So that is... So, so I request everyone to make sure you have an Indian coating on yourself. Not Hindi coating, not Gujarati coating, not Hindi coating. You are, as a, but have an Indian coating. So wherever you go, that's what India is. If you disagree with me, that's all right. I don't want to force anything. But if, you, if you're thinking of, about it, all right? And when I was a Boy Scout in my school, I used to go to many places and I really got Sheila, Bhuvaneshwar, Puri and all the places. So it brought a lot of India to me. And then my job in South India, it brought entire South India. And I went to Gujarat very late, only I think about 2006, but I fell in love with Gujarat. It's such a nice, nice place. I went from... Nice hmm? Nice road. Right road. Yeah, they have, they have expressway. So, in 2009, they invited me to organize a winter school in nanotechnology. That was the first winter school in India for three, three, no, for one whole week. And it had, it was done in LDRP University. Then also, uh, Vishwakarma Engineering College in Gujarat, and also. Took, took us to Baroda, and when I went to Baroda, that expressway, yes, so it was wonderful, because we have had a bank of Baroda throughout there, and then I went and saw the Baroda city, and then also there was an university, University of Baroda, so that's wonderful, so composites, if you, are, if you want to become a composite, you have to have a coating of the matrix culture, all right? Have I said anything wrong? Okay, thank you. Because you will all go through your life. Say, for example, we have this gentleman from Saudi Arabia. We have to give you a coating of India, and I would like to have a coating of Saudi, Saudi Arabia when I go there. Saudi Arabia is fantastic in science and engineering. So please feel free to interact with him if you wish. All right? Okay, so bridge-like connection. And what happens if you have a bridge-like connection? Then the stress concentration goes down. If you don't have a bridge there, then the stress concentration at this theoretical survey will be three times. But when you have this bridge there, the stress will get transferred through that bridge. So there is no stress concentration. So if you have applied stress of 20 MPa, it goes to 20 MPa. But if, if you don't have a thing and they have void, then at that point, why the stress becomes 60 MPa. Mansalayo. What does Mansalayo mean? Anyone understand? What language is Mansalayo? Do you know Malayalam? You are from Tamil Nadu, okay. Oh, thank you, yes, it's Malayalam. Mansalayo.
I, I used to go through Tamil and I had a lot of uh, Tamil friends also, Gauri Shankar, MS and Bala Subramaniam and things like that. So they used to speak Tamil. And also there are people from Karnataka and Andhra. So in Isra I met. I also showed you a photo of a gentleman whom I met in Israel, right? Did I show you a photograph? Who is it? Is APJ Dr. Kalam. So that, and he was from Tamil Nadu. But when he was there, he was an Indian. The whole India came to him. And in fact, from Ahmedabad, that's where I actually met people from Ahmedabad in there also. Ahmedabad, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. He went to there and he saw that Dr. Kalam, he was Mr. Kalam at the time, he was in charge of the satellite part, division part. And there Mr. Kalam was scientist D and his, his uh, staff were scientist C. So Dr. Vikram Sarva used to go once a year to give promotions. So once he went there and I was at the time and Dr. Uh, Kalam asked his staff to be promoted from C to D. And then Dr. Vikram Sarabhai said, hang on, but if they become promoted to D, they will become all your level, then they will not respect me. He said, I don't care about respect, but they do all the work. They do all the work which I present to you and so please promote them to D. I don't think about myself. He said, okay. And then he went there. And he, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai recommended that Dr. Kalam be promoted to E. Dr. Kalam never applied for that. So that's how things are. Okay, so Dr. Kalam, he received a letter saying that you are promoted to E. He went and said to Sir, that I never applied for E. And he said, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. And his secretary's name was Mr. Thakur. So he was from, okay, uh, um, Gujarat. So that's how things are there. And wonderful work he used to do. But in the evening, he was an ordinary person. He was always an ordinary person. There was a rocket club. I used to go there. We used to, I used to play contract bridge cards with Mr. A.J. Smoothie and other heads. And Dr. Kalam used to play badminton with Mr. Araba Mudan. And every time he won, he used to shout so much the entire, entire locality could know that Dr. Kalam is winning in the UK. Fantastic. They are very good friends. So bonding is very important. Well, in any form, between countries, between states, between people, between materials, between structure, bonding, sometimes too much bonding can cause problem because then stress transforming may not be there. But a good bonding, moderate and optimum bonding is important. So that shows you have bonding. So the stress control, and for civil engineers or mechanical engineers, they will say, what does bonding mean? So that's when, otherwise they will come and attack you. So tell them, if you have the bonding, that means there is no stress concentration here. So they, instead of stress going up three times there, stress remains at one time the same stress. So it will not put more stress on the structure. All right, yes? Increase in tensile strength will be due to the composite provided there is an interface. And otherwise, what the tensile test does not understand, tell you that there is a, sometimes tensile stress comes down, but because what happens, the, at that point, there is stress concentration, which is bringing down, <laughs> down this stress graph. Any polymer composites, provided you have a bonding between the matrix and the and the thing. Sometimes modification is required. Sometimes, say for example, if you're using glass epoxy, so you have to put you put some coatings. Every every composite you actually put coatings. Since carbon epoxy composites, the coating is much less. But glass, you have to put all composites. You have to put some. But what we are trying to do, if we are putting composites, 
or coating, it can be expensive. And if you are using bridge structure or things like that, if you have to keep coating on all the carbon fiber and then, so sometimes it may take years after years. So select carbon is what advantage is that carbon is carbon. And if you are putting it in carbon fiber and epoxy, what is the composition of epoxy? What common thing it has like carbon fiber? Epoxy has carbon. Yes, so that itself gives the thing. But if you are putting glass fiber, does glass have carbon? No, that's why with glass you have to give some coating there. So that is, so if you have epoxy, that's why this already a carbon coating. So you don't, because if you have to put coating, it, it is quite expensive. That's why, but this gentleman, my PhD candidate, he was very stubborn because he was a chemist and that's what I've seen about chemists. I love chemists because of that. When you do a graph, if the R square is any less than 0.99, chemistry will throw it away. But then I had to make them understand, look from engineering point of view, you cannot do that. It's like if you want to get a good food, you your wife or your mother makes some excellent food. When you are outside, they may not do that. So when your wife or your mother makes food, R squared is not even 0.9 and it's 1. But if you are going and eating somewhere else, the R squared can be 0.8. But if you say you don't like it, you have to keep on starving. That's no good. You know R squared in straight lines? What is R squared? Is the slope, how it matches with the, with the you would like to have a straight line, but depending on how the points are. So this is how, this is how it is. Carbon epoxy will bond without any coating because there is carbon. As long as on the surface of the carbon there is no impurity. All right, something like that. But glass actually you have to put. What is the coating you have to is giving on glass fiber for bonding in carbon in Polymers? Silane coupling agent, right? Yeah, coupling agent is the name and silane is the formula of the material. Okay. Now, sometimes they may silane, but in Western countries they call it silane. Alright, but it doesn't matter. But I like, I love as a composite person, I like this bond. This is the bond which is very important. Yes. Fracture surface. So the fracture part you are not looking at it. But fracture when fracture happens, even does not matter how strong bond you have, if the applied load goes exceeds that, eventually they become separated. So that's a different thing. But is the sub sub fracture surfaces. So this is where it's not the fracture surface, this is below the fracture surface. This. What you can do, you can, when you look at the SEM, you can cut the thing and you can give a coating and look at the fracture surfaces from the top. Or you can take a parallel surface, okay, parallel surface in the top there is the fracture things and as you are coming, let's say this is the, the fracture surface. So you can co you can coat here, you can coat here and then put it in this scanning electron microscope, look at like that. Alternately, you have the fracture surface but you cut it, not fracture but cut it with a diamond coating and things like that and then this is your ori original fracture surface. So if you are looking from here, you have a small part, this part is original fracture surface and here this is the you have separated it and polished, all right? So this is how you can do. You can use your imagination to look at all different parts. Sometimes if you want to look deep inside, you can do a drilling and actually milling and things like that. But the fracture surface is, is what gives you the... Sorry? What percentage of polymer? We have seen, we have gone up to 80 percent and it's fine. Yes. 80 percent flyers. Yes. 
not 20 percent, 20 percent composite, 20 percent polymer. We have gone here, in this one is, we have gone to 60 percent, but in another one which I will show, there is Dr. Ahmad Zeni who came from Indonesia, okay, and, and through them I learned about Indonesia and other people who have not gone to those countries, but he did up to 80 percent because he was a polymer engineer there. He said, Bando, why do you only go to 40 percent, 60 percent publishers? Because if you want to make me use of flyers, why don't you go to 80 percent? I said, yes, go. And he went and he found a thing. And then I said to Akman, I said, Akman, why don't you go to 90 percent now? He said, I'll do it in my post or get all the things. But so you can do 90 up to 95 percent. 90 percent flyers and 10 percent polymer composite, you can do that. We have a 95 percent fly ash and 5 percent polymer. That's by weight. Yet, normally when, in, in, the, in the models, they normally use on the basis of volume, but the equations, you can also have weight percent. Laws of mixture. You are familiar with laws of mixture? Laws of mixture and inverse laws of mixture? I'll write it down on the Yes, yes. Okay. Is there any? Oh, I found it. Okay, there is called rule of mixture and inverse rule of mixture. If you say E of composites equals E of matrix times fraction of matrix plus E of fiber or flyers times fraction of flyers. This is called a rule of mixture. And then someone wanted to do it better. This is the weight fraction, weight fraction. This is weight fraction, weight fraction. Because then some composites when you make them and you try to use this rule, the, it did not match well. So then another rule of mixture came, it's called inverse rule of mixture. So it gives 1 over, see these chocks are breaking down, so there may be in future you can make some chalk polymer composites, put 80 percent or 90 percent chalks and 10 percent polymer, so they will not break. Okay, that can be your next patent. And if you do that patent, send me an air ticket to come and attend your patent ceremony. I don't need anything else. But a couple of cups of tea or coffee will be all right. Now this is inverse rule of mixture. So this, I do not exactly remember all of it, but this gives you another thing. If you go to inverse rule of mixture, so these are the two different things, rule of mixture and inverse rule of mixtures, okay? But it involves the modulus of elasticity, then fraction of the matrix, weight fraction or volume fraction of the matrix, then modulus of the fiber and weight fraction of the fiber or fiber or particles, whatever you see. So there are rule of mixture which is the straight, is the give, and then sometimes the rule of mixture when you apply this rule and put the put the actual values of the properties, they may show a lot of difference. Okay, and this is what the inverse rule of mixture. So it has more, and this why these laws are developed because when people do the experiments and they use these equations and they find they do not match well. So that gives them an opportunity to come up with a new journal paper 
all right if some of you have good journal publications and, and submit and if you ever want me to be a referee you can recommend my name there all right <clears throat> but please let me know because i get so many things i often do not get time and when i go through the journal when they send sent to me uploading unloading and things took so much takes so much time i said i cannot do that i'll go through the paper and i'll give my comments on a page and i'll send it back to them so now they know that i don't have time to go through all this website and things because computers are funny sometimes and they they start playing games with me said, all right and i'm not dr abdul kalam i cannot win all the time okay so so this is like a bridge like connection now what does a bridge do that before i change this what does a bridge do if you have two rivers a, a river this side and that side what does a bridge do apart from showing the structure and everything what is the advantage of the bridge one at a time please it bridges the gap okay okay and what do people represent yes okay so you can trust. thank you all of you are right but when it goes to the bridge so you have these two things so things are available but if you if you cannot transfer the load and the load can be anything load can be anything from one side to the other then it's a big gap it's a big gap and that gap is covered by this the river water so you tell the water okay you remain there we are not disturbing you but we need to transfer load from here to there and that load can be anything so people car trucks okay so that is why a bridge is important and even polymers when i look at it so this is ganges river and this side in my hometown this is hugli district and this this side is 24 bagnas district and this is my home and here i can see the kali mandir and Vish Vishwanath Mandir there, right from there. But I cannot, I could not go there unless I use the bridge, Vivekananda Bridge. But of course, there is another way you can go. Never say no. The other way you can go, you can swim from this side to the other side. But I never swam from here to there, other side. I swam from here and went to the middle of the Ganges and then came back. I thought if I go to the other side and if I cannot swim back, how will you come back all right so all my swimming i learned in, in the river ganges so when i came to lucknow and who was parking passing and then i found that new bridge and new things that ganges 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 everywhere yes that's so good okay so bridge is important that you can transfer the load and that makes it easy easy for everything the load transfer means people can go all right these are planes are there but planes take a lot of time so bridge formation it looks good trans but it transfers the load from one side and if you do not have you do not transfer the load means that means there is a gap between there and when a bridge collapses why does it collapse because when is the load it creates a crack and it collapses and it cannot go through so lots of work is done in that area so and in america especially there are lots of bridges and many bridges recently crack under load but the american ministry of uh, army navy yeah, the ministry of army actually they have laboratories which have been there and because i used to work before and in defense i could visit those defense laboratories and they actually change they are trying to change or improve all these bridge structures by putting carbon fibers and that initiative came from switzerland professor usmeer so who came to my conference three four times and i have visited him three four times so that kind of thing making lightweight structure but it has to 
transfer the load and no time it should break. You have to make sure you transfer the load but not temporarily. You make it, it's lifelong, it will be able to transfer the load. And that bridge should not break. So the load has to be limited. Like in many places you might find that if you are going through a bridge, you might say the tracks over 10 tons are not allowed on the bridge. Why? Nothing wrong with the company, but if you are going there, that 10 tons can break this break this bond. Okay? So that is what so my minute things can do to the big things. Alright? But at the end, safety is the important thing. Molecular dynamics simulation of composites by by this studio. All right. XRD spectra, fly ash and twenty percent fly ash polypropylene composites. This is fly ash, the intensity of fly ash, and then this is the intensity of fly ash composites. So fly ash, here you can see these peaks are at this 2 theta. What is 2 theta? What, what is that equation? Bragg's law, is it Bragg's law? <coughs> n lambda equals 2d sin theta and often n is considered to be 1. So lambda is 2d sin theta. Alright, so civil engineers, you are also you know about it and chemists, physicists and material scientists, you know about it. Now you have fly ash, these peaks are here, particularly one for malite and alpha quartz. And then when you put epoxy in it, you can get some new peaks. These are flex peaks, they are not sharp peaks. And also here that sharp peak changes into more broad peak. So what is that broad peak? That means the concentration in the fly ash, you have very high concentration of that thing, but in the polymer, because you are using 20, 30, 40 or 50, so that concentration goes down. But you still have, and if, if it becomes flat, then it's almost, it becomes partly amorphous. So this is something which I had learned when I did my PhD, and my PhD was on environmental stress cracking of polyethylene. And I had to do wide angle excess scattering and small angle excess scattering. My supervisor, he pushed me through all these things, and I'm so grateful to him. Supervisors, and sometimes, because you can see they're very naughty. But if they're naughty, that means they're very good, they want your good. So always remember that. And always be thankful to your supervisors. And if you think they're harassing you too much, take a nice cup of tea or coffee. They said, please have a drink. You are very tired throughout the morning. Okay? Because they have to look after so many things. Yes? All right. So, these things show that some of the peaks have shifted. Some of the peaks, this peak slightly shifted there. This peak position is there, but it become crystallinity has gone down, become, becomes partly amorphous. This peak has shifted. And all these bonds and things, that means what happened? 2D la N lambda is 2D sine theta. So whatever you have the sine theta, the angle, when you put the bonds, that angle may have changed. It might slightly affect the angle. Okay? So then your friend says that N lambda equals 2D sine theta. So D is the displacement between the planes. So this is how. There is a this peak which is there, this peak shifts in between this, it becomes like that. And again here the sharp peak becomes a bit not sharp anymore. So malloid has diffraction planes. These peaks actually show the diffraction planes. HKL, you remember? So what is the diffraction planes? There are planes, everything, every crystal. So 
depending on what is the x, y, z. x, y, z is in the, okay. So that's what it gives you inverse of x, inverse of y, inverse of z. So that is how this mallard shows diffraction plane. There are all these, and the intensities are given like that. And alpha quartz also have these things. So, so these are the mallard peaks. But when you put the fly ash in the fly ash, when you put the polypropylene, it they shift. Now this is the empirical formula for my light. This is my light model. Super okay. So you have aluminium, aluminium, then silicon, then oxygen. So this is the formula of my light. So this is the my light model plane, and if you are looking at the one one zero, and then polypropylene has five chains. H 10 dp. So now, when you put my light, this one into this, that is it then becomes a composite. They interact with each other, and that's how it starts growing. So you have the malite, you have the malite, and then you have the polypropylene, and that's how. And this is X. X is that direction, Y is that direction. So this is how the composite starts showing structure. And then if you start correlating interaction potential energy between the surface of the malite and polypropylene in the different planes, they are different. In one, in some cases, attraction, and in some cases, it's repulsion. Because in some cases, some part of the this fly ash may not accept the polymer chain, so it's repulsion. But in some other parts, they said yes, that's very nice. So attraction and repulsion, these things can be done. So this is what all he, Dr. Dilipnath, actually worked out, and the conclusion from this. 20% flash composite with polypropylene showed 14% showed high tensile strength compared to neat polypropylene at 50 or 70 degrees C. Flash is acting as beta nucleator in the polypropylene and fly ash composites. So, enriched tensile strength by 400% if you are using modified fly ash and composite. So, here you will see that. With 20% fly ash, the strength went up only 14%, but if you modify, it added another 400%. Can you see that? If you modify, that means you give a coating to the fly ash, polymer and whatever the coating. So, details are given in this thing. And observe extensive inter inter interfacial bonding in the, by, in the ACM, and then scan the interactive crystalline plane by MD simulation, molecular dynamics. MD stands for molecular dynamics. Oh, he also said, welcome to Sydney. This is Sydney Harbour Bridge. And what is this? Kangaroo. I still wonder how kangaroos run. They're fantastic. What is fly ash? So, end of the thing is, you, when you leave that, you, you keep in your mind, hang on, I'm walking out not with all thank you and everything. So, I have to remember what is fly ash and how it can improve properties. Okay? All right. How can I close this and have to go to the next lecture? Who can close it? Can you close it? Dr. Abdul, we are making work very hard. Just close it and then we'll. Oh, we, we have gone through all this flyers. Can we? Disposable problem. Okay. Or oh, maybe the, then we, we call Professor Cod. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. No, don't touch it. I don't, I, I don't touch it. Thank you. He is the boss. Okay, we'll take a five minutes break.